Though there are expl- potential explanations for the Fermi paradox, and one of them that I kind of like is that the truly intelligent creatures are those that decided not to colonize the whole galaxy because they'd quickly run out of room there because it's exponential, right? You send a probe to a planet, it makes two copies, they go out, they make two copies each, and it's an exponential, right? They they quickly colonize the whole galaxy. But then the distance to the next galaxy, the next big one, like Andromeda, that's two and a half million light years. That's a much grander scale now, right? And so it, it also could be that the reason they survived this long is that they got over this tendency that may well exist among sufficiently intelligent creatures, this tendency for aggression and self-destruction, right? If they bypass that, and that may be one of the great filters if there are more than one, mm-hmm. right, then they may not be a type of creature that feels the need to go and say, oh, there's a nice looking planet, Um and there's a bunch of you know ants on it. Let's go squish them and colonize it. No, it could even be the kind of Star Trek like prime directive where mm-hmm. you go and explore worlds, but you don't interfere in any way, right? And and also, <laughs> we call it exploration is beautiful and everything, but th- there is underlying this desire to explore is a desire to conquer. It, yeah, is, I, mean, I mean, if we're just being really honest about- Right now, for us, it is, right. And, and you're saying it's possible to separate, but I would venture to say that you wouldn't, that those are coupled. So I could I could imagine a civilization that lives on for billions of years, that just stays on its, like figures out the minimal effort way of yeah. just peacefully existing. It's like a monastery. Yeah, and it okay. limits itself. Yeah, it limits itself. You know, it's it's planted its seeds in a number of places, so it's not vulnerable to a single point failure, right? Yeah. Supernova going off near one of these stars or something, or an asteroid sub, or a comet coming in from the Oort cloud equivalent of that planetary system and without warning, you know, thrashing them to bits. So they've got their seeds in a bunch of places, but they chose not to colonize, colonize the galaxy. And they also choose not to interfere with this incredibly prevalent primitive organism homo sapiens right um, <laughs> or, or they uh this is like a they enjoy this is like a tv show for them <laughs> yeah it's it like, could a be like a tv show right <laughs> so they you know, just tuned in right so those are possible <laughs> explanations show. yet i i think that to me the most likely explanation for the Fermi paradox is that they really are very very rare and you know carl sagan estimated a hundred thousand of them if there's that many, some of them would have been way ahead of us, and and I think we would have seen them by now. If there were a handful, maybe they're there, but at that point, you're right on this dividing line between being a pessimist and an optimist, <laughs> yeah. and, and what are the odds for that, right? If you look at all the things that had to go right for us, yeah. and the, then, you know, getting back to something you said earlier, let's discuss, you know, primitive life, yeah. that could be the thing that's difficult to achieve, just getting the random molecules together to a point where they start self-replicating and evolving and becoming better and all that. that That's an inordinately difficult thing, I think, though I'm not, you know, some molecular or cell biologist, but just it's, it's, it's the usual argument, you know, you're wandering around in the Sahara Desert and you stumble across a watch. Is your, is your initial response, oh, you know, a bunch of sand grains just came together randomly and formed this watch. No, you you think that something formed it, or it came from some simpler structure that then became you know more complex. All right, it didn't just uh, form. Well, even the simplest life is is a very very complex structure. Even the even the simplest prokaryotic cells, not to mention eukaryotic cells, although that transition may have been the so-called great filter as well. Maybe the cells without a nucleus are relatively easy to form. And then the big next step is where you have a nucleus, which then provides a lot of energy, which allows the cell to become much, much more complex and so on. Interestingly, going from eukaryotic cells, single cells, to multicellular organisms does not appear to be, at least on Earth, one of these great filters because there's evidence that it happened dozens of times right. independently on Earth. Right. So by by a really great filter, something that happens very, very rarely, I mean that we had to get through 
um, an obstacle that is just incredibly rare to get through. 